Joining me now is a public affairs analyst, Adini Kunu. Uh, he is here to um, help us make sense of some of these issues. Good morning. It's nice to see you. Yeah, good morning. And thank <laughs> you for having me. Thank you very All much. All right. Yes. Now, Nigerians have been asking various questions. So many years down the line, we're still talking about a bacha loot until today. And no one really seemed to understand or seemed to know exactly how much is still out there. But here we are, expecting another tranche to be sent into the country. But before we get into the ABC of what is coming in, I'd like us to talk about the execution and how the disbursement and the utilization of the one that we've been getting all the while. Mm -hmm. Talk to us, how comfortable or how, uh, or what concerns do you have when it comes to a bachelor loot coming back to the country and being used for the country? Uh, let's say that um, the total of it is about five billion pounds, basically. Uh, and by implication, <laughs> what they told us is that whatever it is that comes in will be deployed uh, to meet certain needs. But let us also talk about um, some of the monies recovered when Abu Salami Abu Bakr was there. I remember very well that a certain 900 million pounds uh, was actually said to be returned. Uh, that was, um, there's a nine somewhere in mm. the figure. And we were told that the money uh, usually gets deposited. Uh, that was, um, there's a nine somewhere in mm. the figure. And we were told that the money uh, usually gets deposited in a special account uh, with the Central Bank of Nigeria. I know that in these times, openness, you know, accountability is more on the high. Uh, so I think if we talk about the Abacha family loot, as it were, then we have to really look back to the ones that have been recovered. Now, coming forward, there was one uh, that Switzerland gave us the opportunity to have access to uh, within the past calendar year. I know that the administration mentioned that that would be used uh, for the poorest of the poor to meet their needs and uh, to give them some monies, which I believe to a great extent the deed. But many persons also queried that, that when you return money or you decide to share that to people who do not have, you have not taken them out of poverty, mm -hmm. that at best you could use that money to organize some kind of trainings that can empower them, ensure that they acquire needful skills that they can use to survive. As some other persons have said, there is infrastructure challenge in the country. Why don't you deploy the funds to address infrastructure needs that can also generate some funds for you and you plug that back into the system? So I think very much that um, when you talk about the Abacha loot, more of accountability is very, very important. And let's also not forget, although Abacha loot is in focus, there are other funds being seized by those who perhaps are in the country and they have stashed certain amounts of money abroad. Mm -hmm. I think that beyond the Abacha loot is to make more or less like a complete um, you know, um, account of all the monies Importantly, the judicious uh, deployment of the funds will do a lot to help us here. Perhaps this is why the president spoke in his Independence Day speech yeah. that he would be working in alignment with some agencies outside the country to ensure that um, there's an end to illicit financial flows, tax evasion, and issues like this. But then again, the question goes back to how do we you know, have that healthy relationship that will ensure that this, issues like, as this do not occur again because of how it is draining the country? Let me say that um, for the EFCC, that is the topmost anti-corruption agency. I want to go back to Ibrahim Lamode. For many persons who perhaps have forgotten, uh, there were issues he had after he left office as the AFCC Elmsman with respect to the assets recovered. Mm -hmm. And I can say that that particular issue, which was taken to court over accountability, has not been dealt with. Ibrahim Lamode was among those that traveled to London for the PNID recovery. Nobody's talking about that. We also had issues around what Farida Waziri, another former Helms person of the EFCC, went through. I'm saying here that for every issue that has to do with accounting for what has been collected, first the agency that is saddled with the responsibility of collecting or recovery and repatriation of those funds must have those who will not be fingered 
and corruption issues in the course of handled corruption cases mm -hmm. because that's what actually call to question whatever it is we intend to achieve. Then if you go ahead and look at what this administration has been talking about, I think we have to reinvent the ideas behind resource collection because um, if you collect and you do not really, really, really show that what you've collected will impact certain segments of the society, certain segments of the economy, then perhaps it's in futility. And also let's know that the money in question uh, will be given to Nigeria or returned to Nigeria under very stringent measures. And that is another thing that we have actually found ourselves in, which should not have been in the first place. <laughs> so if you look at a situation where your money gets taken out by somebody who was supposed to oversee the judicious use of the money, but in getting the money back, don't forget the Channel Islands, where this money is, will have to get a percentage. Yes. Yes. The United States government, through which the money was you know, siphoned, because the money was wired through that, will also get a portion and of that. And even the lawyers who... Uh, who oh, no, the don't talk about that. <laughs> you should actually sacrifice about 15% of, of that. The money. Of the money. Of the money, yes. Yes, to the lawyers. Wow. So that's okay. a fact of the matter here. Well, uh, we have to leave you here now. All there's right. so much There's so much about this, uh, you know, everything that goes into bringing back that money. Well, sometimes the amount is there, but if they tell you how much percentage is going into settling different things... Oh, boy. All right. Thank you very much, Hadidi Kudu, for coming on the Thank program. Thank you for having Thank me. You. Thank right. you. Joining us now is a public affairs analyst, Adini Kunu. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you very Glad much for having me. Thank you. Now, the conditionalities, which some have termed stringent measures when it comes to this looted uh, funds, uh, have uh, been referred to as robbing us, so to speak. And there are talks about how do we ensure that uh, these issues around um, the repatriation of this fund, the conditionalities are resolved, uh, even as despite the fact that we are looking at on the government part ensuring transparency. But then, these conditionalities that are uh, you know denying us of some benefits, how do we resolve it? In the first place, somebody who is Nigerian or who was Nigerian, um, alongside his national security advisor and one of his sons, took this money as far back as 1994. It tells you that in excess of 20 years, we willingly gave what should have been deployed to the best use in this country to another country. And I also have to tell you that if you willingly took something to another place, um, it may be difficult for you to want to make claims in respect of why do we have to be subjected to anything that has to do with getting this money back. Don't forget that every sovereign state in the entire world has certain policies that guide the depositing or the withdrawal of certain funds from the economy. Don't forget we're not talking about chicken change as we say in local Absolutely. palace. We're talking about very humongous amounts of money. And for a country or for a particular island as Jersey Island, so I've been trading or doing business with such, don't forget there's a certain Duraville properties that really have been having access or make use of this money until uh, the royal courts there said, not at all, we're going to put our feet down. You won't go on with this money because it's illicit proceed. It's a kind of fund that has stabilized the economy over the years, as it were. You may want to argue all you want, but that's a fact of the matter. So getting to pull out about $2 billion from an economy itself is no, is no means bit. So it has to go through such stringent measures to ensure that they don't have economic crisis. Don't forget, even if they took such an amount away, from a 15, 16 trillion economy as that of the United States of America, it will still be felt. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that because it's a sovereign island, as it were, we must subject ourselves to the policies that guide the financial activities of that particular society, or else we won't get nothing at all out of it. One concern Nigerians have is that right now, government is fighting corruption. Government has been fighting corruption. And this is an outright proceed of corruption. Yeah. It's an evidence by itself. The money is being returned is an evidence by itself. And if you have to really follow, like they say, follow the money. Mm -hmm. If you follow the money to where the thing is, a lot of persons, one person, institution, company must have facilitated that money. The issue of consequences as to 
what should be the consequence of, of being involved in all of this? In the first place, let's understand mm. that tax havens were created by those who have power to control major economies of the world. And you may want to argue all you want, there are illicit funds flowing across the world that eventually gets domiciled in certain places to be properly used. That's a fact of how the world economy operates. Ask yourself the question, why you'd create tax havens? Are monies taken from economies that are functioning properly to places where they pay little or nothing for? It tells you that certain persons have found a way to circumvent the due processes around the world so that they can get more and give less of that. So if you understood that there's a background to even creating tax havens, you may not argue so much. But let us say this as it is. I think if certain things are revealed, some other persons will take the plunge in this issue because such funds were moved from a particular point here. Mm -hmm. We're talking $2 billion. Mm -hmm. You don't expect that such funds were taken out by hand. Some financial institutions were involved in moving such an amount out. Even in the United States, the question people are not asking, what banks were used to actually channel the funds to Jersey Island? Nobody is even talking about that. This is a fact. But there are times when you name names. The cataclysm that will result by virtue of what you say will be too impactful for somebody to look away from. So that perhaps is the reason why nobody is revealing the various channels where this money is going through. We're just talking about the fact that it is domiciled somewhere mm -hmm. and a certain door of your property is involved. There are lots of people who matter in this issue. So yeah. does that mean that uh, we are not yet ready when we say we want to fight illicit financial flows and block uh, these loopholes? I tell you, uh, being ready is what I wouldn't want us to put percentage to. Okay. Uh, but I have to say that it's enough courage to have even mentioned that certain amounts of monies are somewhere and that efforts have been made to actually repatriate such funds. And I have to say this, in all of the things people are saying about the president, even being able to talk about the fact that we have certain amount of money somewhere, <laughs> it, it may have chosen a lot of media courage. people, keep your mouth quiet. It's a lot of courage to even say mm. that right. Nigeria has such an amount of money somewhere. All right, because Adeni. Would, <laughs> that's another thing. <laughs> we have to leave it here yeah. now. Thank you so much, Adeni Kunu, for My your pleasure. insight My into pleasure. this. Thank Always interesting to have you. you. Joining us in the studio now is a public affairs analyst, Adeni Kunu. It's good morning and nice to have you join us. Welcome. Thank you very much for having <laughs> us. Yes, please. Now, there are perspectives to the issue of Abacha loot. In fact, Abacha loot has become a cliche now. It is a cliche. Now, some analysts have said that uh, it is also possible that some people who looted some monies at the cost of plea bargaining to say, okay, I agree, let us blah, blah, blah put all the monies together, return them as a bachelor so that uh, as part of their way of, okay, let's uh, let everybody be happy. What do you say to that theory? Well, I think plea bargain um, is an ideal if indeed we have an idea of how much was taken out because obviously when somebody loots a certain amount of money, what are the measures put in place for you to repatriate or for you to recoup the amount? If somebody took 10 billion certified or found out or verified, um, obviously from the books you found out the person took 10 billion. Is the 10 billion still intact is the first question. So if from your findings the person took 10 billion and you ask the person, record show you took 10 billion, the person tells you, well I only have 5 billion left. How do you get the 5 billion? It would depend on where the person actually hit the 5 billion. If you look at the reason we're here, we're talking about what somebody took from Nigeria mm. and stashed away in faraway Jersey. It tells you that if at all we have two billion there to collect, maybe eventually we'll get just one billion of that back, despite the fact that the person took two billion. Mm. And that is why some persons say that apart from plea bargaining, which makes the person return a portion of the money, certain punitive measures should also be considered for taking it in the first place mm -hmm. because the chunk of that amount has been lost to perhaps certain financial policies where the money was stashed. It therefore means that we have to come across to people that we have a responsibility to oversee their what? Common patrimony mm. as those who indeed 
want to put measures in place to address those things that indeed affect us as a people. And it is important to reveal all of the things surrounding, okay, giving soft landing even to people who take what they should not have taken in the first place. Because it's important. What, what would be, in your view, these measures? Because uh, we have another issue at hand, speaking about the PNID. Yeah. And uh, people are questioning, how do we put an end to this? Because we say we are fighting corruption. In the first place, let everybody who occupies certain positions in government understand that government doesn't end when your turnaround's off. It continues after you. And what you do whilst there, will either have positive or negative impact on the what? On the entire populace. If you look at the PNID issue, started in 2009, mm -hmm. effected in 2010, God took Iradua, let me use that word. The Jonathan administration came on board and overlooked what they should have given consideration to. The Buhari administration came on board and felt it wasn't important. Now it is biting us hard. I think if the successive governments actually have the mindset that the PNID issue essentially actually has their signatures appended to it. Now, the reason why we're here is the fact that they said the procedures weren't right. Uh, certain persons got what they shouldn't get. But let's remember that we still have nothing less than 12 other signatories on this agreement mm -hmm. that are Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And even as I speak, there was something that, that got published in the Guardian of yesterday about some lawsuits waiting in the ranks. Immediately something starts on the PNID because if you look at it, Nigeria will have to pact with nothing less than half a million US dollars as far as this is concerned. It therefore means that whenever we talk about what concerns money that affect this country, it should be taken with utmost seriousness. Mm. The issue now that we're talking about repatriation actually happened because successive government perhaps did not take, pay keen attention to it. To the right things. To the right things. Right. Now, let's, let's talk about, as we round off now, the issue of preventing these from happening. Okay. We're where we are already. Now, the TSC, the whistleblower policy, the EFCC, ICPC, <laughs> all of those <laughs> are gatekeepers one way or the other. Yeah. And as an instrument or as an agency, you know, to prevent monies from not only leaving the country, but uh, leaving the government coffers and, and, and so on. We know how challenging this can be when it comes to monitoring the money and ensuring that it is, it is accounted for. But how can all of this be effective for the benefit of the average Nigerian? In the first place <clears throat> is to harmonize our policies, is to harmonize every documentation that guides the functionality of these respective officers. Mm. The helmsman of the EFCC is still in acting capacity mm. because there has been brick bats between the legislator and the executive over his appointment. And up until this time, he's still acting because the president insists, I want this man. The DSS gave reports about the Brian Magu because they found certain things has not been right. So that's the first question. So I think the first thing is to look at all of the laws that regulate these agencies and tidy up the loose ends. On another account, you have duplication of certain guidelines in the constitution which is superior and certain acts, maybe the EFCC Act and yeah. all of that. So I think the first thing is to tidy up all of the conflicts within the documentation all or right. the guiding principles. If we do that, we can then address all the issues. All so right. first is to ensure that all the guidelines are stringent enough to prevent you from starting first mm. and then backing on what to put us in problem. Okay. Then I think with that we'll get better. All right. Thank you so much, Hadeni Kunu, for, for your deep insight into this. Thank I you. I appreciate it as well for the opportunity. <laughs> thank you. Right.